Uh, we are the, the hangover members of the Drupal South Steering Committee who have been on the committee for a while now and are staying on. And we have a little overview of what has happened recently. Um, our biggest achievement this year is we've organized a conference. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and oh, and um, Jenna, hello, welcome. And Jenna, also. Mm -hmm. It's not the front. Oh, it has a little overview of slides. Oh, you want to Yeah. Mm -hmm. As you can tell, we've been organizing a conference and haven't spent a huge amount of time on our own presentation. Um, but we wanted to keep it casual. Uh, feel free to sit close so you can get involved in the discussion. Um, this is more of a, a roundtable session update than us just sitting here talking to you. Um, and we will just tag team. Um, we haven't worked out who's doing which section, but we'll work it out as we go. Um, so just a quick overview of what we do as the committee and the various roles within that. Uh, we do want to talk about our uh, committee members and the election that we just finalised on Friday and the new committee members might be sitting in this room. Uh, we want to talk about what we've actually been doing since the last time that we were all in person in Hobart in 2019. A uh, bunch of recent events that we've done, challenges, and some like lockdown thing, and uh, then what we're thinking about doing into the future. Uh, as the chair of the committee, I'm going to pass to Dave Sparks to talk about the committee role and goals. Yeah, so uh, Drupal South has always been set up as a, a subcommittee of Linux Australia. Um, we do have almost complete independence, but what Linux Australia provides for us is um, just the level of logistics and infrastructure, um, finance and, uh, and cash flow so that we can get events off the ground. And they provide the, uh, the insurance, um, a whole bunch of kind of legal stuff that we need to not to run events. Um, we have a catch up with them once a month and report on our activities and find out what they're up to. They're a good bunch and they're very supportive of the Drupal South community and very appreciative of our events um, and the general level of success that we provide through those. Um, our main role has historically been to select I guess, the event locations, um, take bids, liaise with people to organize the events, um, local committees usually. Last couple of years during the, the COVID um, era, uh, we have organized the events mainly um, in-house within the committee uh, last year and- Well, this is also the Drupal Drupal Oh yeah, cool. Um, but we, have a, a pool of central resources, uh, templates, guides, docs, um, some social channels, um, and some promotional um, activity to support those events. Um, but really, you know, we're here to provide some sort of strategic oversight and continuity and consistency from event to event um, and make sure it's all successful. Um, I might just add to that final point so if you've attended Drupal South for the past decade or so we did have a system in the past where the event would end and then everyone would look at each other and go who's organizing the next event and so the the key reason that we put this committee in place was so that we could have continuity across the events and that the ball wasn't just kind of passed to some unsuspecting victim as I like to call them um, because obviously organising an event is an incredible amount of effort uh, and thanks to all the volunteers that we have that help us with that. Um, and like Dave alluded to, the last event that was solely managed by a uh, volunteer organisation was Salsa who ran Drupal Gov online in 2020, very successfully, I might add, but uh, a couple of nervous breakdowns narrowly avoided in the process. Committee members, do you want to talk about this, Jenna? So we have a all-star team for the last couple of years, uh, including Dave Sparks over from New Zealand, Sahal, um, our treasurer, um, and me from Brisbane, and Owen and 
uh, Christy, uh, who wasn't able to come over, so she has taken over from Nicole, who had uh, a little drupal top baby. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. So <laughs> if you'll see her little baby, so Nicole Junior. Yeah. So this is our team. Yeah, our yeah. team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we should uh, like um, um, Pixar cartoons. They always have. Pixar babies, when they make a cartoon, they have how many babies were born, so triple so can have them there. <laughs> Just to keep it a bit personal and family oriented. Uh, do you want to talk about the terms or what we oh, okay. um, So, in terms of continuity, what we've done with the structure of the committee is that we have uh, rolling terms, one that starts in November, uh, another one that starts in May. So, we've got, I think, three seats changing. Well, we've actually got three seats changing in November and then two in May. I can update those slides. And that's just staggered so that we don't have like five new people all coming into it and we've got at least uh, a gap there to be able to do handover. Um, and very importantly, we've uh, in our charter have established that we need both uh, location diversity so that New Zealand always has two seats that they're represented on the committee and also two women. Uh, and then we have a fifth member that can be whoever's got the, the most votes, which is the approach that we took with the election. Um, oh, I didn't update this slide either. But do you want to talk about this, Dave, or should I keep talking? All right. <laughs> uh, so uh, in previous years, we've had not many candidates. This year we had lots of candidates, which is fantastic. It shows that people are actually interested in what we do. Um, and uh, I'm sure that you recognise maybe the names on that list there. We ended up with 117 votes from members of the Australian and New Zealand community, which is the requirement to vote for people on the committee. And uh, the next people that are coming on will be fulfilling those two year terms. And then we'll have another election in September, October 2024, and that will then choose the next five. Um, obviously, with people like Dave, who were continuing anyway, that was fulfilling a, a NZ seat, um, there was no need to put that up for election. And then we only had one other candidate from NZ who automatically came into that mix. And the results, oh, I haven't even put the names in there. <laughs> it was a busy morning, but it adds to the suspense. So as I said, Dave's continuing on as chair. And then uh, if he chooses to step off sometime before 2024, there'll be a transition to a, a new chair. Uh, Chris Burgess, also from NZ, he'll take over uh, one of the seats from May onwards. So then again, we have this crossover for the NZ candidates. And then in terms of announcing our new members of the committee, uh, we have Marjorie Tongway, who introduced us. If you want to put your hand up. <laughs> Congratulations. Uh, so, Madri's from the ACT, been working with Dribble uh, a very long time. About 10 years now. Running the ACT meetup. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Alongside our other new committee member, Michael Richardson, who is not from the ACT, but goes there every month to help run it. <laughs> Uh, and then Julia Topless, who's sitting behind them from Morphed. Third seat. Um, and so Michael's actually going to uh, commence his term from November as well. And then Julia will come in in May. But sh you are more than welcome to join our meetings before then because we'll have a whole bunch of things to do. So congratulations, everyone. Uh, great to see you joining up. Uh, activity since 2019. Day. So, uh, 2019 was um, Drupal South in Hobart, uh, which was a, a good, fun soiree. Um, and coming out of that, we uh, developed a, a strategic priority plan, which sounds very official uh, and important, and it is. Um, and that had uh, a number of initiatives penciled in for it. Um, and then, yeah, something something happened. Um, and all our lives got a little bit disrupted and put on hold. Um, and the strategic priorities um, uh, haven't gone away. 
um, but we didn't have as much uh, opportunity to act on those as, as we would have liked. Um, and so I'm, I'm not sure what your experience has been like over the last couple of years, but uh, for most of us on the committee, it's still been a very busy time in our day-to-day -day work lives. Um, and there's still been uh, a need to support the Drupal South community um, and push things forward. We didn't want to just put everything on hold for two years. So we refocused our attention um, on things that we could do. Um, the, the Drupal South website, um, which I hope you all have been to in the course of the conference, uh, got a redesign and a bit of a zhuzhi up in the back end and a rebuild, um, and that's looking really great. And um, I think our biggest role is communication and, and giving people somewhere to go to learn and participate, and the website really is a cornerstone uh, for that. Um, and <coughs> we uh, used our retained profits from our history of successful conferences to um, uh, bring on board a professional event manager and marketer um, to keep continuity going month on month um, between events and also to ease uh, the workload for um, event organisers and the lead up to events. And that's been uh, a very successful um, program for us. Um, it's enabled us to um, work on our outreach beyond our little Drupal South bubble um, of usual suspects and everyone here, um, and start promoting uh, Drupal more widely um, within the open source community, but also within the, the professional industry as well. So it's been very successful for us. You recognize the website, I'm sure. <clears throat> so uh, we ran a, an RFQ process for this. Um, uh, did, did a call for submissions. Um, we got three, three in, I think. Yep. Yeah. Um, and went through a, a, a bit of a, a like a, a branding light exercise um, with Marin for the design, um, and just tidied up our assets in our presentation um, and modernisation and some nice colours um, for that. And then um, the team at Tomato Health Studio. Um, did a really good job of running that through a very efficient build process. Um, and the site, I'm not sure if you've ever heard this before about a Drupal site, but it evolved over a fairly um, you know, a lengthy period of time. There were some changes, there were some leftover bits and some forgotten corners, um, and that all got tidied up um, and um, upgraded as well. So I think platform message first. Yeah, and as I mentioned, this platform message has uh, been great just hosting that for us um, all along and providing support um, for that. Um, so yeah, it's it's there and it's prepped um, to serve as a platform over the, the future um, as well for uh, ongoing kind of marketing engagement and collaboration stuff. So. Yeah. Uh, the RFQ for the events of marketing was, was won by Sterling uh, Marketing. Again, we ran an RFQ process and had a call for submissions, and we got three or four for that. Um, and Nicole Sterling um, was successful in that bid, um, has a good close ties with the community, um, knows the people in the landscape, and has brought a, kind of a level of professionalism, in particular to our sponsor relations um, and dealing with those. Um, and I think, for this conference, the, the sponsor support has been fantastic um, and has taken away a lot of problems that generally have existed in the previous event to event um, uh, approach. And having that continuity has been, been pretty good. Um, yeah, so like I mentioned, Salsa Digital organised Drupal Govern 2020. It was actually incredibly successful, 340 attendees. It was before people had uh, got excessive Zoom fatigue. <laughs> so uh, we did actually do really well with that event. Um, and we're very open with our figures in, in terms of income and, and profit generated. I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, and we went through a big process to choose the right online platform. So we chose Events Air, which I think is a Brisbane-based company, if I'm not mistaken, that did very well out of COVID. They have probably had to scale back a bit since then. Um, and then in 2021, we realised that people were getting quite tired of sitting on Zoom. So we took the approach of running three short format online events. Uh, one was 
an executive summit where we invited people in leadership positions in different large organisations, mainly <clears throat> in uh, end user organisations, uh, not from vendors themselves. And uh, that format had a keynote by Jithma from BitDBC, Department of Primary and Capital in Victoria, and then a number of breakout sessions um, that were then uh, moderated by sponsors. So it was a good way to have sponsors get in front of potential clients uh, without being too overt about it. And then we ran two public events, one in August and one in November. And again, they were half day events, quite rapid fire uh, uh, formats and really engaging talks. Uh, 240 attendees, 60K income, 12K profit. And that was the first uh, event that we brought on our event manager to do, hence the lower profit. Um, and I think it's important to point out that we have been very profitable as an uh, event in the past because of uh, volunteers doing the bulk of the work. And it was a very conscious de decision on our part to say, okay, well, we're actually making a uh, decent profit here. That can take the load off volunteers to focus on more fun things like speaker coordination and that type of thing. And the logistics of coordinating with venues and coordinating with sponsors and packing um, sponsor bags. Although I think you got roped into that last night anyway. Yeah. Just a, a couple of things to add on that one. I think with the uh, uh, short format, um, it's a bit more bite-sized, um, but it was just as much effort involved in organising each of those and, and corralling speakers and getting submissions. And so without having uh, a paid professional working on that uh, some days every week, they wouldn't have happened. Um, and I think that for us to sustain and continue to, to grow what we do and improve the quality of what we do, that continuity has been really important. Um, and the, the first exec summit was a bit of a tester for us, um, and that went really well. I think the thing that, uh, that came out of that that refers back to our strategic initiatives is that um, we did paid promotion and advertising to get outside of our regular audiences. Um, and um, the, the kind of, uh, we used LinkedIn to connect with end users um, and decision makers in the um, in the general community, Drupal community, in the, the digital community in Australia. And so um, one of the aims of Drupal South is to foster the development of Drupal and uh, adoption and uh, use of Drupal. And so having that um, marketing to end users and decision makers um, kind of fed into that goal and was quite successful. And so for Drupal South as an organisation, um, we picked up some new connections um, and you know, got more people talking about Drupal out there in the in the decision making world. And Brisbane, <coughs> Drupal South, Brisbane. Mm -hmm. All right, welcome to Brisbane. I hope you enjoy now our humidity and <laughs> uh, at least we have our con, so it's all good. And the floods from. February will all clean up. Anyway, so um, yeah, finally we can all travel again and we can see face to face each other and mingle and have coffees and enjoy um, the actual on on in purpose in person attendance. So today we have about 230 attendees, some of them late uh, registrants. So it's good that. Finally, it's like, oh yeah, we're coming. And it, uh, everyone came from all over the place and from New Zealand and Singapore and from Canberra. So it's great to see people even on a, like, yes, the conference where it was organized pretty quickly. Um, and it's only because we didn't even know when the borders will reopen because the borders were open and then they closed again and then open and closed. So yeah, finally in July, I think uh, New Zealand opened their borders. So it's like, oh, finally we can organize something. And they said they're not going to close them again. Yeah, so um, we have how many speakers? I think about 45 speakers today as well. So lots of sessions. Um, and 
lots of sponsors as well so go check the sponsor booths out there's some cool stuff some games and some um internet of things happening at the booths as well um and we have all our volunteers here as well just trying to um get all our speakers into proper rooms and connect them to AD and keep working so yeah that's today i think you can tell that it's uh the first time that we've plugged our laptops into screens and things like that <laughs> do you want to add, add anything to that? yeah i just want to have a, a shout out to the um volunteer team organizing the content led by vladimir and uh, again one of our strategic priorities is to um bring new people into the industry, but also bring new people into the conference, um, bring new speakers in. And so we had a, um, a focus on getting some first time speakers in, having a variety of rooms. We've got a big room and we've got some smaller rooms where people will be less intimidated uh, talking. And I think that'll be one of our priorities going forward for events, uh, for events from here is to give people the opportunity to speak and encourage them to do so um, and increase the, the quality of our, our talks and our content for everyone uh, to enjoy. Uh, so I want to talk about some of the challenges that we had. There's an obvious one there. I'm sick of talking about it. Um, one of our other kind of paradoxical challenges is that our event profits are retained by Linux Australia. And over the course of a decade, that is a significant sum. That's uh, upwards of $300,000 that's sitting in Linux Australia's bank accounts that we generated. And it's uh, actually really hard, not necessarily to get that money out. I mean, we do have to go through a process to uh, request grant funding to, to access that funding, but having the resources to actually deliver on things outside of the event uh, and I think we had some very ambitious plans in 2019 that was uh, the basis of that strategic plan. Uh, and a couple of those initiatives just fizzled because A, we couldn't kind of do anything in person, but B, uh, solely relying on volunteers to actually execute on things can be very hard uh, over the, the long course. So I think in terms of my own role in the committee, uh, and transitioning off the committee uh, in May next year. Uh, I would like to see the committee put some emphasis on how we utilise those funds. They're our funds that from our sponsors. We want to deliver value uh, to both the community and those sponsors in the long term. We'll take questions at the end, thanks. Um, and yeah, so there's a, a big opportunity there. The, the money's there. It's just a case of actually putting the the initiatives in place and having the volunteers to coordinate that and that might be things like training or doing booths at uh, university open days to educate people about Drupal as a career opportunity all of those types of things um, I think also importantly a lot of people ask well what about the Drupal Association um, you might be aware I'm also a board member of the Drupal Association globally and the reality is, is that they're just not equipped in terms of their structure and uh, internal staff to assist events like this uh, in the regions. And this is a global um, issue. I'm not saying it's a problem because what's happened is uh, organisations like our own have stepped up and filled that, that gap. Um, uh, meanwhile, the, the Drupal Association just focuses on running DrupalCon and their initiatives uh, primarily in North America and, and Europe. Um, like I mentioned, volunteer-run initiatives, they do struggle to maintain momentum. And again, there might be some things that we can do in this post-COVID world to make that easier. Uh, and then the final thing to note there is cross-Tasman engagement, while it's a remit of our organisation, is challenging. Um, so I think the biggest issue we had with this event was who knew that flying from Auckland to Brisbane was going to cost twelve hundred dollars or what did you pay? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So <clears throat> there's hurdles like that that a we couldn't come kind of, um, preconceive that they would become problems, and um, and I think we do want to ensure that we can maintain that connection across the Tasman long term. Uh, future initiatives. I think we've covered some of this anyway. 
Dave, do you want to talk about this? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, in the past, in the old days, in the in the pre-COVID world, um, the events would happen five months on year, would happen once a year, and there wouldn't be much in between those. Um, and so, in our strategic approach is we want to be having um, smaller events. Um, the exact day was successful. The shorts format was successful. We want to have some touch points through the year to keep the community engaged. And it serves as a bit of an on-ramp as well for speakers and presenters to try something um, in a smaller, smaller format. And that gives us um, you know, a few more tent poles to maintain the awareness and the marketing activity throughout the year to keep the profile of Drupal strong, um, both in Australia and in New Zealand. And then um, the conference calendar has <laughs> come out of hibernation it is now very busy, um, and so it's hard to find slots in the year that make sense. And um, there's generally been a sense from the previous conferences that as we get closer towards the end of the year, November is a painful month to do a conference. Um, October is not too bad, um, but our, our plan is to move Drupal South uh, much earlier in the year, um, which suits people's business calendars and, and everything better. Um, and that's our plan for 2023, is to have the conference earlier. Right. You had a question? Yeah, um, I just want a clarification. Uh, when you said that the profits are retained by Athletics Australia. Yeah. Why? <laughs> I guess why, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ultimately, yeah. yeah. So for us to go off and create our own non-profit association is just another layer of headache. Uh, and there was a decision made more or less a decade ago that Linux Australia had that structure. They support a number of other open source events, so they do WordCamp and PyCon and a bunch of other things. We're by far the best <laughs> and the most profitable. Um, and I think that has suited us over, over the years um, because all of the legal liability ultimately rests with them in terms of um, event insurance and financials and they've got all of those systems in place. If we added that to our little committee, then it's like, well, that's all we'd be doing is compliance with being a, a non-profit. So essentially, you'll, retain, you'll, you'll maintain that? I think at this point in time, we will. Um, like I said, they do have this hoard of retained profits <laughs> that they're sitting on. Um, and I mean, to be fair to them, I don't think, like, I, I know what their bank balance is and I don't think they know how to spend it themselves. Yeah. Um, and again, it comes back to this whole thing of, uh, are we solely relying on volunteers to execute on some of these initiatives? Or do we suddenly say, all right, we're organizing a dev day and we're engaging this professional organizer to pay them to get it up and running um, because putting that effort onto volunteers is often not the fairest way to get things done. Yeah, because this also gives us opportunity maybe to sponsor someone to come over to Drupal South, maybe in Wellington or in, in New Zealand it will be next year to bring more. <laughs> well, it, 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 it was postponed and then it was postponed and it was postponed. So, uh, yeah, so that, and, and if we have to run the organization ourselves, we'll have to hire a proper accounting company or an accountant and we'll have to do all the documentation ourselves, where here we just give it to Linux, Linux Australia to do that. So it just for us, it's like, yeah, it's, it's either you write your own platform to sell tickets or you get some other platform and pay a small percentage to actually sell tickets and they have everything and refunds and transactions with credit cards and things like that. So it's the same here. Yeah. Cool. yeah. yeah. Simple, simple. Any other? I mean, just on the looks Australia, they're very well and they're very supportive and we've got a good relationship. Um, and they bring uh, experience and expertise above and beyond what we have within our community. The people have been doing there for a long time. Um, the cost to go it alone and, and break it away would would be five figures a year cash outlay. Uh, the cost of liability insurance is brutal. If anyone's bought any insurance lately, it's painful. Um, even maintaining bank accounts and all that kind of palaver. Um, yeah, we would just be eroding our money and spending it on, on admin, yeah. whereas they can keep it warm and just get it back and use it. Is the, is the, I've got two questions. So the first 
I hope they agree easily. Is the 300,000 set aside as Drupal South money or is it a bit ambiguous? Uh, so it's not in a separate account. Um, so we finish each event, uh, the account that we've used for the event gets dissolved, uh, the profits get pushed into a central Linux Australia account and then they spin up a new account for our next event. Um, however, we have very detailed accounting records that I will be happy to share with you <laughs> that show exactly what profit we've had from every event going back to 2010, I think it was. And there's never been any problem going back for grant money, aside from having to go through the process. And it's just that they have an internal process. So even when we spin up a new event each year, um, I think even with this event, they're like, well, you have to fill out this application to, for us to tick all the boxes. I think I said to Dave, don't they know who we are? <laughs> <laughs> and and, to, and again, in fairness to them, their committee and council uh, refreshes every couple of years anyway, so we're, we're always kind of dealing with new people on yeah. their end that don't even know really what Drupal is, let alone our yeah. history with them. Let's be fair, like it would be super nice if we just had a debit card and, and we could just give the money as we want to. Uh, Any time you cut corners on risk of government, yeah, right, that's, that's guaranteed by you. Yeah. Yeah, because they're non for profit, so you have specific um, requirements to fulfill so that no one will be just flying pri private jets <laughs> around. That's too bad, I'm not sure about my seat. The second question I had was I was just curious, I might be remembering the numbers wrong, but Drupal Gulf uh, Canberra was 350 attendees, yep. 60,000 in revenue. Drupal South Brisbane was 230 attendees, 120,000 in revenue. Yep. What was the major difference? Where are you sitting? Hey. Where are you sitting currently? Where am I sitting currently? Yes. <laughs> in a very expensive hotel I'm, venue. I'm not, I'm not talking about profit, I'm talking about why was there so much more revenue with less attendees? Oh, in terms of revenue. Yeah. Uh, so more sponsorships. Yeah, and, and more expensive sponsorships. Okay. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> with Drupal Gov, it was purely online. Sorry, I was just yeah, making a joke. Uh, I think the ticket price was like 100 bucks or like, a, I think our attitude with those events was we're still going to charge a ticket fee so that people actually turn up. Mm. Um, that was the only reason that we actually charged rather than making it completely free. So, yeah, no, it's just how we structured the, the, um, the budget. And again, the attitude in the last couple of years is we've got so much cash in the bank, let's not actually try and generate too much more profit. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, this year and last year, we've been around that kind of 10 to 20K in profit. Like we still need to be profitable so that we're not um, losing money. But um, there hasn't been a focus on let's make heaps of profit because we need to be able to work out how to spend all of the existing funds first. Yeah. But the new committee may choose to change that approach in the future. <laughs> uh, I think we're close to time. Any final questions? Yep. I was wondering, how are we supporting Linux Australia? Are we contributing something to them or it's really... Uh, so they take a 6% six, <laughs> 6 of our event budget as a administration fee. Yep. So that just gets taken out yeah. nationally at the end of... The, uh, the whole event. Yeah. All right, we'll wrap it up there. Thanks for your interest. Um, just keep an eye on DrupalSouth.org and our community communications channels. Uh, there will be opportunities to assist and volunteer and help out in various ways in the coming year with our fantastic new committee. <laughs> All right, thanks, everyone. Thank you. And if there's any other questions or anything crops up, um, in the future, just flick us an email or, or grab us on Slack. So we are responsive and keen to chat to the community. So. And come to local meetups. Yes, yes. yes. Come to local meetups. Yeah. Local meetups. Yeah. Very important. Yeah.